Hello there, I'm Dr. Curtis Finch, Superintendent of Deer Valley Unified School District. Welcome to a brand new episode of the award-winning Soup Scoop Podcast. You've heard me before refer to the district as a machine with lots of moving parts that keep it humming. That is true, but I also don't want to take away the human element out of DVUSD. A big machine with lots of moving parts also needs great people working every day, and that's what we have. You see the results of our people's work in our 26 A-rated schools, our numerous A-plus School of Excellence awards over the last few years, and ultimately our 94.6 graduation rate, one of the highest in the state. But beyond the letter grades and the data tables are some truly extraordinary stories from extraordinary people. And we'll share two of them with you today. Later, you'll meet someone who has been in education for almost 60 years. And he continues to be a part of the school community at Copper Creek Elementary. But first, we introduce you to Brenda Western, an English language learner's teacher at Union Park, who not only connects with her students on a personal level, but she also connects with her neighbors on a personal level. So much so, she practically has an extended family. Well, my name is Brenda Western. I came to Deer Valley uh, as I was searching for jobs here in Arizona. We had recently moved from California and I was working at a charter school and I was not happy there. And so I didn't know what to do. And my husband was uh, at a job fair and he got, uh, he was actually right next door to the Deer Valley table and that's where they introduced him to the program that Deer Valley had for new teachers and to help them get their certificate and I just jumped in, you know, jumped on it, called the district, communicated with them and they gave me the interview and it was amazing. And so I'm in my second year now. I, yesterday was my first class for my second year. For the so, TPP for the program? TPP teacher program. Prep program? Yes. Okay. Tell so, me a little bit about that. How that how's that going? This is year number two now, This right? is my my year two. But okay. I think what's more interesting is where I, they put me to work. I am a uh, I am not a native of the United States. I was born in Guatemala. Oh. And I came here when I was 12 years old. I didn't speak a word of English. So um, the job that was offered to me was actually working with EL students, English learners, which are really near to my heart. So I know, you know, how they feel. I know how to work with them and, you know, their trials and their struggles that they may be going through. I have lived them. So it was like match. You were, made, you were made for that. I it's was made well. for this position, yes. So, uh, rumor has it that you were also involved in a situation and uh, that you had an impact on some kids. It was a few years ago. Okay. I did, you know, it was in my community. These children were living. I met this single mom, had okay. five kids. Okay. Second oldest has is handicapped. She was born with no arms. Okay. But um, I was able to, uh, I don't know, for some reason, uh, through activities that I have with youth, I met these kids. I was doing a scout program, and I have an, I had an 11-year-old, and she had an 11-year-old. I reached out to her for him to be into the program, and she uh, agreed. But um, I could tell the lady was having struggles, but had lived with the five kids. Um, this happened, I think, in February. Um, no, September. By February, unfortunately, I kept track with the kids. I was taking them to activities, actively coming to their house because I could notice there were needs. Sometimes I would bring them food and they were just very grateful. And so uh, I didn't know that they were actually starving. They had no food. Mm. So uh, uh, their mom in uh, February, she took her life. Mm. She, uh, she took her life in the garage. The oldest boy found her. He was 17. Kids were 8 to 17 years old. So I called that day. It was a Saturday and I was going to take them to an activity and the oldest boy said, um, yeah, we're leaving. The social worker's taking us. And I said, what happened? And he said, well, um, I can't tell you because my siblings are here. So I asked him questions. And unfortunately, when I said, is your mom sick or is she, did she die? And he said, yes. And I was devastated. But when I started crying, he was actually calming me. And he said, it's okay. 
thank you for everything you did for us. And I was just like, I'm not going to leave you. I will be there for you. So anyways, I call the social workers and the social worker says, are you Brenda Western? And I said, yes. And they go, they're asking for you. And I said, well, what's going to happen with these kids? And they said that they would be put in different homes because nobody's going to take five children. And I said, well, I'll take them all. Could you please, you know, can you come and see my house? I have a five bedroom house. My mom lives with me and my son, my 11 year old son and my husband. And so, you know, check on us. So to make the story short, that night I received five foster kids in my house. And it was, um, it was really hard. It was, I always say it was the worst of times, but it was the best of times because it really brought, brought us close. But to give credit, I think it was a higher power that actually brought us together and kind of made the situation for these kids to come together because the oldest boy related to me, his little story of, you know, going to a higher source in his life to be able to help them through this struggle. And soon after that, then he said, I started coming over. So I don't give credit to me. I think that, you know, there was a higher power there, but um, that's the story. Wow. So um, all those students came over, or those kids came here with you to uh, um, this for to Arizona, or did were they all for, graduated? For, um, actually, they, they have... Uh, Graduated okay. little by little, and okay. the oldest boy. I just have to. The oldest boy is a fireman now, okay. and he just got a job in San Diego okay. to become a fireman. Great. So, so you had a huge impact on these kids, obviously. Oh, they. It's been uh, like we're family. There's no other way. Like they call me Ma and Pa, and we're their parents, and wow. you know we're spending Christmases together, and we we only. I only had one son. I had I. My husband and I could never have children, so my my only son is adopted. But having all these kids have become a big family now, sure. even for my son. And now you're at Union Park. I'm at Union Park, and tell me what you're doing here. I am an EL teacher here, okay. and uh, I this is my second year. Last year, I taught part time EL and part time uh, Spanish, so I had nine classes of Spanish and six classes of. EL. So I had a total of, I taught nine classes a day and I had, I was in charge of 15 classes. So it was, it was a big load, but I was, we got through it. And this year I'm doing the uh, EL program just full time because we, we have about 42 uh, students, EL students. Okay. So. And how, how has your life impacted how you teach them? Oh, tell, tell me about that. Uh, my life, I my life is great. I I'm very happy with with. Uh, I feel like I have a connection with the kids. I feel like I can relate to them. I know some of their struggles. I know when they tell me when they came from other countries, what might be happening in other countries. So it's a uh, you know it's a uh, it was fit for me. It was I was made to come here. Wow. Even though I'm far away, I live far from here. I'm 45 minutes away. I drive 45 minutes wow. to come here. But I, it doesn't matter because I love this school. I love this environment. I love the kids. I didn't, you know, I wouldn't want to do anything else. Oh, I just want to thank, personally thank you for obviously making an impact on your own kids that you inherited. That's a big step. That says a lot about your character. It says a lot about what you're made of. And then thanks for coming here to Deer Valley and helping out Union Park School and obviously you're making a huge difference with those kids. I just want to say thanks and keep up the great work. Thank you so much. That is such an inspiring story as Miss Western not only overcame challenges in her own life, but she pays it forward with neighbors and students to create a positive impact every day. Our next guest earned his teaching certificate in 1966. And this Sunday, September 1st, he celebrates his 87th birthday. Howard Massey could have hung it up many years ago, but he loves being part of our school community so much he continues to contribute every day as a custodian at Copper Creek Elementary School. Oh, and he does this after a one-hour, one-way drive every day. My name is Howard. I am a janitor here at... uh 
Deer Valley School District. I started out as a janitor at Deer Valley Middle School, and that's where, and it was Jeannie Prince who actually, she hired me. She hired me, and she really always, she had my back in, every, in everything over there. Uh, she was a very interesting secretary to the principal at that time. And uh, I have to say, I probably would not have been in this school district if it hadn't been for Jeannie. been for her. Jeannie. Well, I'll be darned. No. I definitely, I definitely would not. Mm. But... Uh, she inspired you. Oh, she was... She uh, made sure that, uh, you know, anything that pertained to me was well done. We I really, I, 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 I really can't say enough about, about uh, well, Jeannie. Jeannie. Well, no, I'll, have to, no, I I'll have to tell her. She was going to get a big head now. She knows that she's uh, <laughs> making a difference. That's cool. Well, the, what's um what's your story before you got here? I hear you have quite the story that got you here. Oh, a story before I became a janitor. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, before I became a janitor, I had uh, substitute in teaching. I I uh, sub throughout the East uh, Valley. I live in, I live in the East Valley. I live in. Uh, Gilbert, Ooh. and so you so, drive every day to here. I drive every day here. That's amazing. Well, uh, you know, some people say, "Oh, that's such a long drive." It really isn't. When you're going against traffic, most of my time I spent in Philadelphia. That's and, what she and, said. You're and, from the East Coast. I'm, yes, yes, yes. And I worked in uh, New Jersey. Mm. So. Uh, now, that was a little diff distance, but uh, once again, you know, I went against always. I was always going in against the traffic. Okay. And uh, so long as you're moving, it's not that big of a commute, huh? It's not much. It's not mm -hmm. that much. It really is not that much of a of a commute. I uh, was a high school business uh, teacher. Mm. And I uh, taught in New Jersey for 34 years, the Paulsbar High School uh, School District. Yep. And one of the things that I was disappointed uh, about, and that was when they started to uh, cut the business classes. Okay. And they started uh, scaling back because uh, now I taught... Business math, okay. business law, okay. record keeping, typing, mm. one, two, personal typing, and uh, they begin to cut uh, cut those subjects back. Mm. Mm. Now, of all the subjects that I thought that the kids really needed was record keeping, mm. because young kids, uh, not, not even back then, but even today, they mm -hmm. do not really know how to manage their funds and mm -hmm. to take, uh, get their insurance and to begin to start to think about uh, setting aside when they get employment and they get it and they get their jobs mm -hmm. so when I came into uh, this district and everyone has been really I mean everyone has really been extremely extremely great and kind and I, I, I again I I go back to a uh, genie because she started it all off for, mm. uh, you know mm -hmm. for me mm -hmm. and um, when I left uh, the Valley Middle mm -hmm. School, mm -hmm. 
Then I went on over to uh, Mountain Ridge High School. And uh, how many years were you at Deer Valley Middle and uh, Mountain Ridge? Well, I'm thinking. <laughs> Plus or minus. <laughs> uh, I, I, I would say two years in, at each. Okay. Again, one could not be so blessed because uh, working over there, uh, the teachers over there, I mean, they were phenomenal. Uh, the whole school was phenomenal. But I think that they were so glad to get a janitor because they sure. were without one yep. for a period for mm-hmm. a period for a period of time. Well, I heard you're amazing, so that uh, that rumor's true, probably. Well. I would like to think that the rumor <laughs> is, you know, is this a true? How many years have you been in Deer Valley in general? In Deer Valley, I'm going to ask you a question. Mm-hmm. How many years have you been superintendent of Deer Seven. Valley? This Seven. Seven years. This is the end of my now. seventh. This is the end of your seventh. Mm-hmm. You've begun at the same time. I'll be darned. At the very same time, because it was quite impressive. I met you before. Nice. Now you do not remember, mm-hmm. but I met you at Deer at Deer Valley Middle School okay. when you were coming around and you were introducing yourself mm. to staff and members. I still I do that, that today. <laughs> I try to get to five hundred classrooms a year and try to get out in the building. But yeah, I, seven years ago we met, huh? Seven years, seven years there at, at Deer Valley. I said, oh, okay. this is quite impressive. That's yeah. Superintendent. <laughs> going, Stop going by and around. saying hi. And I, and I always had wondered as to, uh, did uh, you visit all these schools that you have in the district? Because there's quite a few. Yes, it is 42. F- it 42. keeps me hopping. Yeah, I try, to get to every, um, I try to get to every building once a month if I can. Wow. Uh, which is not easy, but I'm no. a busy guy. But no. I think it's important to connect with staff and say hi and see how they're doing. My father was a maintenance man, and my mother was a school bus driver. Yes. And so I always spend, try to spend extra time with my support staff because they're the ones that run the place. And so that's probably why I said hi back then, seven years ago. Seven years, <laughs> seven, seven no, years. Seven years, seven years ago. Well, why, why, um... Where you're currently at today? What do you What do you have in here uh, at Copper Creek? How do you like this spot? Well, this spot I like this spot. Mm-hmm. You have uh, I have to, I have to say that uh, this is Myers, the uh, principal. She is doing an outstanding job. Here. She does a great job. She does. She is doing an outstanding job here. I I and. Uh, she has the patience. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, you have, say the patience of, <laughs> of Job. Job. She certainly has the patience of yeah, Job because she does. Some, some, uh, some of those kids keep her hopping, I bet. Uh, the kids keep her hopping. I'm, 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 I'm thinking about the patience that she has, that she's working with us. Oh, us the staff members, the staff, staff members, okay. And, and, the, uh, mm-hmm. and, the, uh, and the parents. And the staff mem- yeah. members. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I see that. It's a tough job. Principal job is very tough. It is. It, it, yep. uh, it is. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I. Uh, my uh, mother was a. Uh, she was a custodian. Oh, me darn. She was. She was a custodian, and uh, I remember because I used to go after school. Up to the elementary school where she worked. She worked at at, at an elementary school, and I would uh, go in and uh, help her with help her out cl- yep. the classrooms that yep. that that, that mm-hmm. she had. So I would go in and I would clean her classrooms, mm-hmm. and I would do her bathrooms. Mm. And she would always say, "Well, uh, could you could you kind of help the other lady that?" that she, she and a, another woman, they walked to to the uh, elementary school because it was 
it was in our neighborhood, and mm-hmm. they and they could walk so that we could get finished all at the same time and whatnot. <laughs> so that was my that mm-hmm. was my first uh, uh, experience as being mm. a uh, mm. as being a uh, car studian. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, my, I always helped my parents as well. But in Alaska, it was so cold that um, the bus had to be plugged in, and so I would go out in forty below, fifty below, and plug the the bus in. And then I'd start the ready heater that would go underneath and blow heat underneath the bus so we could start it, so we could go to school. So you could take it to school. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I always helped my dad out as well. Um, as I enjoyed uh, fixing stuff, and he was the master fixer. And, yes. And then yes. sometimes we would you know, help out with custodial stuff if they were missing custodians. So I always enjoyed school. It was School was my, my life. I really loved it. What uh, I'm sure you're doing this because of the the intersection with kids. What what kind of wisdom or what kind of opportunities do you have to impact kids when you're when you're intersecting with them uh, in the lunchroom or in the hallway? What do you do to make their days better? <laughs> well, I suppose I always greet them. I like to know you know how their days have have going i uh asked them about what are they doing in uh you know in uh, in school school mm-hmm. i usually ask them about you know about their grades mm-hmm. and things in general that mm-hmm. that uh, junior high kids mm-hmm. are basically mm-hmm doing when I worked at the junior high school now here here it is the elementary school mm-hmm. so i I'm always inquisitive as to what uh, sports that mm-hmm. they would be mm-hmm. involved in and uh it is you know it is amazing mm. uh, the one thing that I did find that was quite different from back east and uh, and at, at least the uh school that I was uh the high school that I was teaching at, because when I got here, it was so amazing that the school seemed to have everything, all of the equipment and stuff that te- the, the teachers had mm-hmm. here in our in, in, mm-hmm. in Arizona. Mm-hmm. I said, "What mm-hmm. are they complaining about?" <laughs> I, I just couldn't I just could not I could not I could not believe it. Yeah, we are but blessed. That, definitely. They have everything. Our bonds and our overrides make us have us have we have a lot of technology, a lot of tools available for teachers. Yeah, for sure. That's one of the blessings. Uh that that's one thing I noticed com, coming from Alaska and Michigan uh-huh. is the 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 facilities were great shape and that's that's all bond and override. Because you know, cleaning something that's old is a lot harder than cleaning something that's new, or newer, or well, you know, newly painted, or newly waxed, or newly, you know, shined up. I totally agree with that. That uh, we have, we are blessed here in Deer Valley for sure. My father, when he passed away, probably a decade ago, at his funeral, hundreds of kids <laughs> came up to him, and he was a maintenance man, came up to the microphone to explain. How their dad had impacted, how my dad had impacted, impacted their lives, them. and what an important <clears throat> role you have in our machine of making a difference with kids, making the teachers um, have a better days and staff making them better days. And so, I just want to thank you for your service. I know you've been uh, working a long time, from what I heard. So, oh, well, you're not a spring chicken anymore. I'm not a no, not <laughs> no, no. I'm not, but uh, you're still still going going strong. Well, I'm still trying to go strong. Yeah. I am still trying here to go uh, strong. Uh, here at Copper Creek, and I have to say about the uh, pre-K and your kindergartners. Amazing. Uh, they, it is amazing the type of work that I see that these students uh, that these little kids are getting amazing. it is beyond it is amazing it is it 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 just blows my mind to see mm-hmm. the work that the teachers put into mm-hmm. their class to their classrooms mm-hmm. oh uh 
Now my favorite that's my my favorite kids really are the pre K. Mm -hmm. The pre K and the kindergarten. Nice. They they I mean they are and those teachers they welcome me to see what's going on in yeah. their classrooms. Nice. They let me they let me come in and yeah. take and take a look and see what they are what doing. doing. Now, all the other teachers are great. Mm -hmm. uh, but those ones are special, huh? The pre-K. Yeah. The, the, the pre-K and the kindergarten, they yeah. are... They are very, you know, they they are very they are very special. No, it's neat. I've heard a lot of good things about you. I wanted to come interview you to hear your story. I want to thank you for your service to Deer Valley. Uh, we're lucky to have you, and you do a great job. Keep up the great work. Keep keep that smile. Keep uh, keep those kids <laughs> happy. Keep those teachers happy. Keep them rolling because we're here to get them ready to learn. When our classrooms are ready, when our schools are ready, the kids can hit the door running and uh, get their learning done. So well, thanks for your service. I can say that here in this school district, they are certainly, they are getting everything, everything that they need, everything beyond. I, I uh, It's just, it's just amazing. So I can say that uh, you're doing an amazing job yourself. You are doing a very good Teamwork, job. right? It takes Team everybody. Work. It takes all 4,200 of us to create a great school district. But That's thanks good. again for your help. You're amazing. Keep up the great work. Okay. These are just two of the thousands of staff members who have incredible stories to share. And we're fortunate to have them as part of the DBUSD family and machine. Make sure you leap over to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or YouTube to subscribe and to comment on the Soup Scoop podcast. You can listen to new episodes and previous episodes on those apps or at dvusd.org slash soupscoop. I'm Dr. Curtis Finch, and you're all caught up on everything happening at DVUSD with a Soup Scoop podcast.